Hey guys, on today's topic, we're going to talk about the different types of tires that are out there for your vehicle. Making the right selection is incredibly important. Probably the most important modification that you can make to your vehicle, where you live and how you drive. Let's talk about it. All right guys, and welcome back to another Talking Mods. So as I said in the intro, we are talking about different types of tires. I'm gonna cover a bunch of them for you guys, and they are very, very critical. Before we even go and study specific brands and look at different things, we have to understand the types of tires that are out there and select the right tires for our vehicle. If you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button. It helps us out. And uh, if you don't know who I am and where this is coming from, well, I am the CEO of Mod Bargains. Been doing this for 17 years um, as an enthusiast for way longer. But the point is, um, we have wheels, tires. We sell them. We help customers out. We work with manufacturers like Toyo Directly, with Michelin, um, Yokohama, a lot of different brands that we work with directly. And um, if you are looking uh, for wheels or even just tires alone, but if you're looking for wheels and tires, we are able to help you out or any other modification. I'll start off with the most obvious one because it's the one that I use here and in our conditions here. Summer tires. So the first one is summer tires. Now they are known as the performance tires. They are for weather that's over 45 degrees. Okay. Now, and they're also for conditions of light rain use, right? So we, I live in California. And if you live in Florida, California, well, Florida gets a lot of rain, so you might want to consider an all season, but at the same time, I do think most summer performance tires are great there. If you're living in a warm climate conditions, summer performance tires are usually the tires you're going to want to go with. There are a lot of different ones out there. I'm not going to go into all the different ones. Typically, they have a dedicated rubber compound for them. So with that dedicated rubber compound, what it means is that they're going to be, they're going to have a lot more grip than your, any of the other tires that are out there. Um, you're also going to have better handling. They're going to basically perform really well in warmer conditions. If it's cold, they will not perform. The reason being is, again, rubber compounds are made out of a fuel base, right? And so when it, the temperatures start to get really cold and freeze up, the compound doesn't perform the way it's supposed to perform. You need a different type of compound in there. So when they make these tires, there are serious guys and engineers and labs making this. Very few exist, but they know exactly and they, they formulate these proper rubber compounds. So summer tires, again, for when the conditions are warmer, they will perform better in the dry and wet. Pretty critical. All right. Now, if let's just stick with the high performance ones, right? Because that's going to be most of our, the tires that we sell mostly are going to be the high performance type of tires and they're going to be the summer performance tires. So just in summer performance, I'll name all the different ones that are out there. There is extreme performance summer. Now, tread life on these with summer performance tires will decrease um, as the more extreme that they become. As the, the heavier the grip is, the tread life will be shorter, meaning that the life of those tires will be shorter and shorter. So just understand that. Uh, you've got max performance. You've got ultra high performance. Again, these are just all different terms that are out there. Now, high end performance competition. This is another one. It's going to be your track competition tires. So if you are a serious enthusiast going out on the track, um, you want to get a level of competition. Now, some tires of these performance tires, for example, let's say a Michelin PS4S or a Yokohama A52, which can be on, on the street, it's a street level tire, can also do excellent on a track. But if you're going to have a dedicated track vehicle, you might want to go with a you know, competition level track specific tire typically the tread life on that the tread is going to be pretty short on it it's going to be just a couple of um what do you call it, track sessions it will be a lot grippier it's going to be very soft um, it will have very little amount of grooves in it as well so um, winter tires now winter tires are going to provide you with the tires that you want to use at anything below seven celsius or 45 degrees right so when you have are in real snow conditions or extremely cold conditions, even if it hasn't snowed and it's gone really cold, the compound changes its performance. So it's going to give you a compound that's more natural. It won't harden during those conditions. So if you had that summer performance tire, it starts to become hard and then it doesn't grip to the grip to the ground, right? But instead, this will naturally have that ability to grip. Again, it's formulated completely different. The oils in it basically don't freeze up. 
Now the tread life are usually going to be deep blocks um, because that digs into the snow. Um, you're going to have it expel water. Uh, the slush that comes out of the snow, it's going to come out as well. One thing you should know is obviously the tread life on these, as it decreases, becomes more and more risk where you lose the performance. You really want to have as good amount of tread on these winter tires. Very, very critical. Typically, what's recommended is to have a winter and a summer tire. Now you might think that's pretty expensive. Those of you who live in like the snow belt of like the East Coast or let's say in Europe where, where you get some serious snow, this is really the best conditions for you. Why? Because it's gonna give you the maximum performance, it's gonna be the number one safety for you and your family um, at all times. It's also gonna give you the max performance. As much as you might think a summer performance tire, no, it's, it's only good at certain times when, when the conditions are right for it. So. Go with that winter tire and then have that summer tire available. If you're switching out between the two during the proper times, if you have the two different combinations, whether you have two sets of wheels or you're just switching them on and off, you will see that the life extends just as long. Just make sure to take them off at the right time. So I highly recommend it. I think that's the best way to do it, especially if you have snow. Now, if you have rain and you do not get very heavy snow conditions, that's where I think we go into the all season tires. Now, all season tires have the characteristics of being um, good in all around, but not an excellent performer in one way or the other. Now, there are some really interesting brands, stuff that's happening. Uh, Michelin just came out with their PS4S all season. Pretty interesting. I'm waiting to test that one out. So the whole idea behind all season tires is to give you the best of both worlds, that it can have a wider, wider range, right? Now it's not a true dual compound, it just has the proper settings for the groove, it has a longer tread, it has um, more of the design aspects that are needed. Uh, the compounds are usually going to be acceptable at a lower temperature. Um, I don't have a number for it because I haven't been able to find one. If you guys do know it, I appreciate it, it would help. Um, and it's basically so you're not having to switch out your set. So if you're someone who just can't get around to it, then it's gonna be the best you can get, but you're not gonna have the highest performance. So just be aware of that. Most tires that come from the factory when you purchase them will be in all season. Um, that's usually what they're doing, unless you're buying a performance vehicle. If you bought a sports car, they usually will have you know a summer performance tire on that car. So look for that. Now, I wanna say a caveat back on the winter tires real quick here. One thing you should know with winter tires is, and this is recommended by almost every single manufacturer, when you are actually um, airing them up, they should be almost at five um, PSI higher than the standard PSI recommended for your tires. You lose a lot of stability when there's ice and snow on the road. But if you increase it three to five, it actually increases, the inflation pressure increases the tire stability. So that will help offset um, the reduction in responsiveness that you're gonna have. So that's one of the main critical reasons you wanna have a three to five PSI increase. Just keep that in mind when you have winter tires for you guys who do run them. Um, Consider doing that, especially if you're switching between, always check the tire pressure and inflate between three to five. You will, obviously every single brand is a little bit different and you know your own vehicle, you'll feel it out as well. So that's my recommendation to you. Don't miss, don't forget to do that. So if you have a four by four vehicle and you're gonna be using it on off terrain or actually even in winter, um, having a quality four by four tire is is pretty critical, especially the deep grooves in a four x four tires help removing the mud off the vehicle, uh, grass, um, snow, uh, and make sure that it doesn't get clogged and uh, it's gonna give you better traction. So guys, those are the basics on selecting just the different tires that are out there. There are a lot. Um, if you guys do have questions and comments, I'm happy to help answer. Please post them down below. Uh, I'm sure I probably have missed certain things and there's probably a lot more details that you wanna go into. Um, every vehicle is different again. Um, but again, what I think you guys should consider is what is your condition that you are living in? Um, do I have snow? Is am I just getting light rain? Um, am I going to be using it for off-road? Am I using it at the track sometimes? Should I just get a dedicated track uh, set up? These are things to consider um, to basically save also money on your tires as well over the long run. So guys, I am looking forward to your comments, questions, and I will see you guys on the next Talking Mods.